Just when you think that everything that can be done in the time travel genre has been done, along comes Joe Barton with the Lazarus Project to prove you wrong in a fresh and exciting new way. Minor spoilers ahead for season one of the Lazarus Project and heavy discussion of the first episode. This show has a bit of everything, compelling action, tense drama and ethical conundrums that will have you sat awake at 3am wondering if you're a good person or not. Played by the effortlessly charming and ridiculously talented Papa Asiadu, our protag is George Addo, a fairly mild-mannered software developer who has a big deal meeting to get a loan for his finance app planned on the morning of July the 1st, 2022. We then see flashes of what is probably the best six months of George's life, as his girlfriend Sarah falls pregnant, they get married and their life looks to be absolutely perfect until a pandemic strikes and appears to be ending the world. Jesus. George wakes up and it is once again July the 1st, 2022. Suffering from the worst case of deja vu experience since Bill Murray in the early 90s, George totally messes up his bank loan meeting and begins acting erratically, because he is aware a world-ending virus is coming, but everyone else, including his romantic partner, thinks that he's some sort of mad conspiracy theorist. George's life is totally falling apart. There's no app development, no baby, and no wedding. Enter mysterious badass Archie who has somehow been monitoring George's Google searches and knows that he is repeating time. She gives him a business card, telling him to meet her there if it happens again. The address on the card is for a building called Clockmaker's House, which is a bit on the nose for a time travel meeting point. Once again, George wakes up on July the 1st and sets off to meet Archie. She is from the Secret of Lazarus project and tells George that they have a time machine. It's not the kind that can take them anywhere, but resets the world to the checkpoint of July the 1st should a world-ending event occur. So you can use it to go back to, like, London in the 1800s? I'm a brown woman. Why the fuck would I want to? Yeah, OK, fair enough. Only specifically skilled people like ex-Special Forces are recruited to work for the project and given a serum which changes their brain chemistry to be what I'm calling time loop sensitive. But George is very rare as he can sense him naturally and he sort of has no real choice but to be a part of the project now. At first, the new Agent Addo doesn't think he will be of any use to the project surrounded by MI5 and trained soldiers, but his software and algorithm experience lead to him spotting information which leads to a stolen nuke. This is when project boss Wes, played by British television royalty Caroline Quinton, explains that there are former rogue Lazarus agents out there working against them, the worst of those being Dennis Rebroff. Or, as I like to call him, Dennis, the best character who did nothing wrong, protect this delightful murder child at all costs, Rebroff. But more on him later. George is trained up and begins adjusting to his new life when his girlfriend's colleague, who clearly fancies her, Carl, the PE teacher prick, pretty sure that's the character's full name and I'm not double checking to see if that's true or not, asks for financial advice and George uses his time travel acquired knowledge to purposely recommend he put his money into a failing business. With the next July the first checkpoint about to happen, George makes sure that Sarah and he are making love at midnight, which is certainly some sort of choice. That morning, Carl the Prick accosts Sarah in the playground of the school they both work in, outraged that George made him lose all of his investment money, shoves her, and George catches her moments before she would have fallen in front of a rubbish truck. Meanwhile, the team has tracked Rebroff down to Paris and move in to get him. George has taken on his first field mission. Um, I'm not a field agent. Who told you that? I just sort of assumed. The mission goes all kinds of wrong, and he sees two of his new teammates and friends shot to death before Rebroff detonates the nuke. I'm calling it Code Black. The production quality on the show is immense. I fully believe that this was Tom Burke riding a motorcycle through Paris, shooting everything up, and finding out that the show was filmed mostly in Bristol and Cardiff threw me. George awakes on the first, shagging his girlfriend, which, after the emotional trauma of seeing two friends killed and the world end, maybe wasn't the best choice of a respawn point. On the phone to Archie, who seems to find it amusing that she was shot on the head, George realises that if Rebroff had not detonated the nuke and the code black called, Archie would remain dead and begins to doubt the project. Distracted by all this, he forgets he has to save Sarah from the truck and the defining moment in George's journey happens as the love of his life is critically injured. All of this happens in episode one. I've sat through two and a half hour long movies with less action.
In the episodes that follow, we see our main character morph from a fairly average app developer into a desperate man willing to do anything to restart the loop again and save Sarah. He struggles with the moral implications of his actions. I'm going to bring her back, Shiv. I'm going to bring you back too. Ultimately, he rationalises it all away as being okay because they will essentially be undone once he resets time. Seriously, peeps, get you a man who will go to these lengths to bring you back from the dead. Did you see me fall out that window? That was intense. However, he doesn't seem to calculate in the fact that his fellow, loop-sensitive colleagues, who he has to throw under the bus whilst teaming up with Rebroth to end the world, will indeed see long-term consequences for his actions. Introducing him as a classic 80s action movie bad guy. A former agent gone rogue. We see him captured and trying to influence George from his cell. You know what they do here, George? They sacrifice life to destroy death. Side note, Tom Burke with a Yorkshire accent and peak beard. 10 out of 10. No notes. But as we get more glimpses of his backstory, we realise that maybe he's not entirely wrong. You ever considered we might not be the good guys? And the horrific revelations about his character and that of Janet in episode 3 absolutely broke me. We see flashbacks to what he was like before he broke bad. Well, recently, well not that recently, but never mind. I've begun to think... Dennis, are you trying to ask me out? Well, yes, I am. Look at him, he's awkward. Somebody save him and his little umbrella, quick. Well, go on then. This is it. This is me asking you out. This is it. Right now. Right now, yeah. Ah, fuck off. Jesus Christ. The thing <laughs> is, think about your bloody time and it starts to do my head in. So, there you go. <clears throat> wow. Well. Uh. I think about you all the time, too. Yeah. During the story of how they went from cute new couple in 2012 to who they are now, Tom Burke and Vinette Robinson, who was also a huge standout as Rosa Parks on Doctor Who, deliver some of the most heart-wrenching performances I've seen on television in recent years, as we see them slowly lose what, in Janet's case, is her will to live, and in Dennis's case, is his humanity. Loop after loop after loop. I'm personally with Rebroth, let him burn it all to the ground. But the writer of a show invites the audience in to discuss these moral dilemmas. Restarting time has consequences for everyone, whether they know it or not. I'm heaping praise on Tom and the net here, but don't get me wrong, there's not a single average performer in this cast. Everyone is on their A-game, and I can't believe the show doesn't have a bigger fandom. It's not just Dennis and Janet who have interesting layered backstories. The first season shows us how Archie and Shiv ended up where they are too, excellently balancing flashbacks and current events with just the right pacing so as not to have the audience lose interest. The Lazarus Project is good. It has timey-wimey stuff, a great cast, feature film-level action, brilliant writing, and Caroline Quinton with a bitchin' Cruella de Vil hairdo. Season 2 premieres on Sky 1 in the UK on the 15th of November and Sky have also put Season 1 up on YouTube to view for free. I'll link to that below. Let me know what you thought of The Lazarus Project in the comments and thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the support for my silly little videos. The lovely comments give me life and the less lovely ones at least make me laugh. Okay, love you, bye!